Welcome. This is Amy Harkson from Bettendorf High School, and I'm going to talk with you about senior registration for the class of 2020. Um, course registration is going on this week, February 11th, Monday. Your student will get registration materials to bring home, and they need to have inputted their course selections into Infinite Campus by Friday, February 15th, and bring their registration materials, their registration sheet, back to turn in during advisory on Friday, February 15th. They can come in and talk with their counselor if they have questions or need some advisement during this week. In senior year, the main thing is that students need to have checked their graduation requirement checklist because senior year, normally, there aren't a lot of required courses left if they've been following along as they should. So it is their job to make sure they can check off that they have met all the requirements, they know where their credits are, and then they can schedule what they need to to complete the graduation requirements and additional electives or core courses that will support them going into college or whatever career that they are moving on to. Under required courses, usually the only thing the student have left would be a language arts course um, because they've gone through at least three or three and a half credits of language arts. So a lot of times they will just need a half credit language arts elective. If they have not taken speech or debate, they do have to take that to graduate. So they would also register for one of those if they have not previously taken them. There are some additional opportunities in senior year we encourage them to think about. The professional internship and work experience are two courses that are very helpful. Professional internship, they will be matched up with a career area that they're thinking of pursuing in college or in a career beyond. We do place students in educational settings, healthcare, business, engineering, any, any different career area. Um, the also work experience is if they have a current job that they wish to earn a half credit and have a block off to attend their job, that is another option. They have to have taken professional skills as a prerequisite, but it can be taken concurrently. So if they wish to apply for an internship or work experience, but have not taken professional skills, they need to sign up for that in their senior registration. There is an additional application that they will pick up in their advisory today, February 11th, or sometime this week from the Student Services Office. They will have, there's a teacher recommendation form they will need to get filled out and then they will fill out the application um, and get that turned into student services by February 22nd to be eligible for either of those programs. Uh, following that, they will attend a required meeting in the spring that Mrs. Rader will, will run. During senior year, they must register for a minimum of six credits. Even if they plan to graduate early or take a Scott Community College course, they must sign up for six credits their counselor will go back and adjust their schedule once all the registrations are complete and we've tallied which seniors want to graduate early or they want to come in to take a Scott Community College class. But they do need to have six credits. They can take up to a full schedule. It depends on what they want to use their senior year for. So they can um, take additional core classes, electives, academies, um, but the minimum is six credits. If your student does want to graduate early, there's a place on the front of the registration form that they can check off if they want to graduate after first term in October, second term in January, or third term in March. Uh, their counselor will call them in in May if they have checked off they want to graduate early and adjust their schedule and make sure that's still what they want to do. If we do adjust their schedule and sometime next year they change their mind and they don't want to graduate early, they just have to meet with their counselor and we can add additional courses. There are a couple new courses, but also some name, cha name changes for next year. Next year, we're adding an AP World History course. We're also adding Early Childhood Education, which is a dual credit, meaning they will get college and high school credit. And the prereq for that is to have taken child development. There are some name changes in courses. So the Commercial Art 1 and 2 are now going to be called Graphic Design 1 and 2. Woods 1 and 2 are woodworking, woodworking design and advanced woodworking, and materials and processes is industrial manufacturing. Journalistic writing is now called newspaper writing. Publications is yearbook newspaper. The important thing about that is if they have previously taken the course under the old name, they can't take the new course. 
it's the same course, they've changed the name. So if they've had commercial art one, they should not register for graphic design one. However, if they've had commercial art one, they can register for graphic design two because that's the prereq. The academies um, and the office aid are a separate application. So they will pick up the application in advisory or in student services if they wish to apply for one of the academies or to be an office aid. It's, these courses are not on the registration form. They can only be registered for through the application. Um, all applications for any additional programming are due February 22nd in student services. And so for the academies, it's based on the application, an essay that's required, a recommendation, and their academic history. A committee outside of Bettendorf High School decides on who does get into the academies. Those are dual credit, high school and college credit. Office aid is working in one of the offices when, within the school, and you do, do earn a half credit and a grade. It's based on application, their attendance history, and their behavior history. There are a lot of dual credit classes at Bettendorf High School, and the list is here. So they will earn um, a half of a high school credit and then up to three or more college credits if they take these courses. I would encourage them to look in the curriculum guide to see what the prerequisites are for these classes. Um, the academies will have a separate application. The only item listed on this page that does not receive college credit is Computer Science Academy. Um, all other ones uh, do earn college credit. There's some very important guidelines um, that I know some of you have experienced. S schedule changes will not be permitted if the change results in a class size that falls below staffing guidelines. Thus, students are responsible for accepting and adhering to the course of study for which they registered. We do staff classes based on the number, number of students who've registered, and obviously that's manpower. So a student may be told they're not allowed to drop a class if the staffing falls below guidelines. So we do want them to be prepared to make good selections on their courses be, so that they're ready to take those courses. Um, they may drop or add a course during the first three days of terms one and three, and for terms two and four prior to the beginning of that quarter. So they need to pay attention, make sure they've got the classes that they want. Senior year, off blocks, that's a hot topic. Uh, if students are at 21 credits uh, starting their senior year, they may have one off block per quarter. That is a family decision. They can certainly have a full schedule, but if they do want an off block and their credits are up to date, they can have one per quarter. Uh, this next section shows you that they will not be allowed to do to have two off blocks in one quarter. It has to be one per quarter. If the student has not earned 21 credits by the time they start first quarter of senior year, they will be expected to take four classes, and when they've hit 21 credits, they can then have an off block. We just have to make sure that they're going to earn all of their credits. Scott Community College classes. In senior year, each senior may take one Scott Community College class each semester that Bettendorf High School will pay for. And it is based on their Iowa assessment scores being 41 um, or above, which is pr proficient in reading, math, and science, or they have a cumulative GPA of 2.5 or above in order to be eligible to take a Scott Community College class. They must first, uh, we will get information out about when the, the orientations are for Scott Community College classes, um, usually in late April. So they need to sign up for a mandatory Scott Community College orientation uh, based on a handout we give them in student services. They will call and they will sign up for a registration time, an orientation time. And once they have confirmation via email from Scott Community College that they are indeed enrolled in an orientation, they will schedule an appointment with their high school counselor here at Bettendorf High School, and then we will help them complete the registration paperwork. We will, uh, a parent will have to sign if the student is an 18, and then we will scan the registration over to Scott Community College. Upon course completion, the student can go online to SCC to send their transcript to their future college. They must attend Pride Time on days they do not have their Scott Community College class and all days if the SCC class doesn't conflict in the schedule. 
If they are failing a course here at BHS, they may be pulled from their Scott Community College class at their own cost to make sure that they're successful in their courses here. Usually, um, we will start registering in about mid-May for the Scott Community College classes. We should have information about orientation dates at the end of April. They can then sign up for orientation and schedule with their high school counselor so that by the end of junior year, they can be enrolled in a Scott Community College class. and We can adjust their schedule here at Bettendorf High School. So they need to listen to announcements and or stop in student services to see when we start to have that information available. If they have a Scott Community College class, that counts as one of their three required courses to be a full-time student. So they may have two classes at Bettendorf High School, a Scott Community College class, and an off block, meaning they're only on campus at Bettendorf High School um, in, for two classes a day. A lot of questions we get about ACT and SAT. And so normally in um, the Midwest, ACT is the most prevalent testing option for college in the East, in the West Coast, and in the South, um, students may take SAT. Last year, we had 223 students who took ACT, so, and we probably had less than 10 who took SAT. Both are an option. We do not offer SAT here at Bettendorf High School, but if you go online, it is offered in the area. We do offer S, um, ACT six times a year here at Bettendorf High School. Here is a schedule of the next SAT. It will be um, March 9th. The registration deadline was last week. There is a late registration. It's also offered in May and in June. And like I said, you can go online and see where it's offered in the area. The next ACT date is April 13th. The deadline to register for that ACT is March 8th. We also offer them in June here at Bettendorf High School. We do not offer the July testing, but it is, it is offered in the area. We will offer it in September, October, December, February, April next year. There is a ZAPS coming up March 30th. That is an ACT prep course um, offered here at Bettendorf High School, and you will receive a mailing on that to sign up if you wish for your student to participate. Questions we get, should we send, should the student take the ACT writing or non-writing, and um, should you send test results to colleges? Uh, we do, you can look on the college website to know if the school that your student might be looking at, uh, re, it requires the, the plus writing ACT test. Uh, your counselor also can advise them to know which schools require that. If you're not sure where you're going to school um, or what might be required, you know, you could go ahead and take the writing. And if it's not necessary, it won't really hurt your score at all. It's a separate score. Should you send results to colleges or just have them sent to BHS? It's always safe to just have them sent to BHS. More and more colleges are wanting the student to go online and have the scores sent directly from ACT. So you can take ACT as many times as you want and they will take the highest score. So I think yes, send your test scores to Bettendorf High School and you can wait to send them to colleges unless you absolutely know what college you're attending and that you want to have those scores sent. For students who retake, these are just some stats that if you retake ACT, what happens with your score? 23% decrease in score, 22% stay the same, and 55% get a higher score. But as I said, they will take the highest score among all the testing times that your student has taken ACT, so they can take it more than once. This is just an example of a high school transcript. Uh, it does list your GPA, your class rank, percentile. It does list the absence and the tardy history, and then it will list every course taken at that North High School with the grade, the credits, and the grade point average for every quarter um, as you go through high school. Um, as I get to selecting a college, I am going to end here, and you will need to look for file two to continue to listen to the presentation.